This is for physics group project. Um, this is Cynthia Degante. This is Jeremy Hunter. This is Francisco Hernandez. Hey, my name is Mohamed Gazi. Hey, pause. We're going to be talking about, um, we're basically defining momentum first, and then we're going to put the relation to moment uh, momentum with the equation, some real world examples, we'll solve some questions, and then we'll relate to an example we did outside uh, earlier for that momentum. So, first, let's define momentum. So momentum, the symbol for momentum is P. And we know that uh, momentum equals mass times velocity, so M times V. So relating to this, depending on your mass and your velocity, you will have a higher momentum. So either one, de they depend on each other, but it's multiplication. So you can uh, higher mass, higher momentum, higher velocity, higher momentum. So for example, if you have like a meteorite, a meteorite that we did some calculations, meteorite, meteorite the size of a small house, if it hits the earth at 30,000 miles an hour, which is average speed, um, it'll take out half a block. Now, if it was the size of a five-story building, it'll take out five miles within its radius. It was, if it was 60, 60 miles in diameter, which is basically my house, the PV is 29, so that'd be the radius of it, it would take out the entire planet. Um, so that's kind of like kind of putting momentum into, into consideration. So let's relate it to something we know. So Force, let's, let's do force real quick. So force equals mass times acceleration. Now, we can rewrite this as force equals mass. So put force equals mass. And then acceleration is just the change in velocity over the change in time. So that would just be delta V over delta T. Okay. And then to rewrite this again, putting these together, we can put force equals... Uh, the change in basically mass times velocity over time. So mass times velocity over time for the whole, whole equation. So, and then basically, again, like we said right here, mass times velocity equals to P. So you can rewrite force as P over the change in time. So that's how we're going to get force, and we're going to use that in our example equation that we're about to solve. Now we're going to do the example uh, for that equation. So our example is that there is a car that weighs 1,000 kilograms and its velocity is 9 meters per second, which is like 20 miles per hour. And it hits, it's going into a truck that's stationary that weighs 2,000 kilograms. And what we're looking for is the uh, final force that it hits the truck with. Pause. Question. All right, so since this is a zero ms, and we're going to find the momentum first. And the momentum is found by the m1 v1 plus m2 v2. And because we know the velocity of the uh, number two is going to be zero. We know this is not a factor anymore. So we can just take the mass, which is 2,000, and times that by our velocity, which is 9, and that's, which will get us 18,000. Okay, so now we have to calculate the final velocity going eastward once the car hits the back of the truck. So we know the car weighs 2,000 kilograms and the truck weighs 4,000 kilograms. So when you add those, you get the total uh, weight of both vehicles. So that's going to be 6,000 kilograms. Now with that, uh, in order to find the final velocity, you need to take the total weight, so 6,000 kilograms, and then times Vn equals 1,800 kilograms times, times Vn. And we're continue as if nothing happened. And what was the Vn again? Just leave it. It's Vn for okay. now. That's what we're solving for. All right. You recording? OK. And then we take, uh, now we just solve for Vn. So 6,000 divided by 1,800. Uh, so 6 divided by 18 is 3. 
So three meters per second uh, is our velocity, and that'll be heading eastward. And that'll be your final answer for that one. Thank you, Cynthia Degante. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere you look. All right, ready, set, go. Okay, so we're gonna be calculating how far Jeremy gets knocked up by, or knocked off to the side by Francisco right here. So that's Jeremy, this is Francisco. Um, so what we need, same as the last equation with the cars, but now it's people. So we gotta know velocity. So to get velocity of Francisco, we measured the distance from where he ran, so that was nine meters. And we know that it took him, uh, my boy made it there in three seconds. So V equals nine over three, which V equals three meters per second. So that's the velocity. Um, we'll put that here. Now, in order to find, to finish the equation, we just take that. Now we know V, so V equals three meters per second. Uh, we know that Francisco weighs 77 kilograms, Jeremy weighs 75 kilograms, uh, and Jeremy's velocity is zero because he's just waiting to get hit. Take that, we plug in the same equation we use for the cars. So, M times V plus M times V. So, uh, mass 77 times three, that's for Francisco, plus 75 times zero, that's for Jeremy. And I'm getting 231 plus zero, which just equals 231. So, put that off to the side. Now we know uh, velocity, uh, and now we have uh, what we need for kilograms for the momentum. So, let's go back here. All right, now we have to plug in the final equation. Now, the total mass of these two is 77 plus 75, which ends up being 152 kilograms. So, we plug it into our equation, which would be 152 Vn equals, um, man, oh, I got charge my phone. 152 Vn equals 231 kilograms meters per second. 152, 152, and again, Vn equals 1.52, and that would be because kilograms cancel out meters per second. 1.52 meters per second. So that just means that Jeremy should be getting uh, knocked over at 1.52 meters per second. Okay. All right, ready, set. Okay, and basically that's it for the rest of the um, presentation. We just talked about momentum, how it affects people, and then uh, just enjoy this clip of uh, Jeremy getting hit by Francisco. Um, and that's it.